In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the Tanzu Build Service, a little bit about its history and how it works, and the value it brings to an organization. Then, I will show you a demo of how to configure Tanzu Build Service and run through a couple of common workflows. Tanzu Build Service was created to make the process of building and deploying an artifact from source code easier for application developers and more secure for platform operators. It does this using a secure application dependency supply chain to build the app, and then continuously monitors those dependencies, as well as base OS level patching for day two operations. But there are many seemingly similar tools in this space, and many of them share a common attribute when it comes to producing a cloud-ready artifact. That is, that most of these tools are based on Docker files, which is a ubiquitous, stable, and proven technology but does encounter some problems when used in the context of enterprise software development. VMware believes that the BuildPacks model is more ideal for enterprise use cases, and this is proven by the success of BuildPacks as a component of Pivotal Application Service, and now Tanzu Application Service. Now, to step back a bit more, let's discuss BuildPacks as they exist within the Cloud Foundry ecosystem, and contrast that with the new Cloud Native BuildPacks ecosystem leveraged within Tanzu Build Service. Build packs are included within the Cloud Foundry ecosystem, and by extension the Tanzu Application Service Platform. Here, build packs offer big benefits for operators by providing a consistent interface for building applications based on many families of programming languages and even polyglot environments. Build packs are centrally managed and available to developers as part of the Cloud Foundry platform, and all of this is backed by a reliable and consistent release engineering to ensure a secure software supply chain. Now, a robust community has come together to take this BuildPacks concept and make it available for other platforms through the Cloud Native BuildPacks project. The Cloud Native BuildPacks project is backed by a huge community, including not only developers at VMware, but also Google, Microsoft, Salesforce, Heroku, and many others. Cloud Native BuildPacks bring all of the benefits of BuildPacks to platforms outside of Cloud Foundry, like Kubernetes. This is done by producing OCI compliant images. These images can be deployed anywhere, including Kubernetes platforms like TKG, but also other container management systems. The options really are open. Now, how do you take advantage of Cloud Native Build Packs in your environment? Well, by themselves, Cloud Native Build Packs really are optimized for local development, and that does not scale well for the enterprise. To scale, you need a robust, opinionated platform to stitch everything together and amplify the value that Cloud Native Build Packs offers and Tanzu Build Service is that platform. Now, let's talk a little about what Tanzu Build Service is. Tanzu Build Service is, in turn, based on another open source cloud native build packs platform called KPAC. KPAC was started at Pivotal and now heavily contributed to by VMware as well as a large community. KPAC leverages the cloud native build packs ecosystem and scales it to be more useful to organizations with many development teams building and deploying a diverse set of apps. It does this by providing all of the power of cloud native build packs, as well as functionality to provide automated image rebuilding and granular control of application build dependencies and base OS images, all using a centralized control mechanism for operations teams. In these slides, I'll show you how the KPAC platform works and how it relates to Tanzu Build Service. But first, let's define some terms. In KPAC, a stack is a pair of build and run images. The build image contains the binaries necessary to compile the code into a runnable artifact. The run image is a small, hardened base image on which the application runs within the container. For KPAC, the release engineering team provides a stream of curated base images based on Ubuntu Bionic and a canonical flavor of distroless OS called Tiny. For Tanzu Build Service, support for additional operating systems, like Red Hat's UBI 7, as well as custom gold images, is included but more on the differences between KPAC and Tanzu Build Service will come later. A store is a collection of cloud native build packs. A few stores are included by default within KPAC and the Tanzu Build Service, but organizations can choose to define custom stores to limit build packs to a specific build runtime version for certain applications or control access to build packs for certain teams. These concepts come together in the custom builder, the functional part of the KPAC platform. The custom builder is defined by referencing a specific stack and a specific store. This builder is then used to define an image. An image uses this custom builder and is configured to also reference a specific source location as well as a container registry. 
Now, a source location can be a Git repo, but also can be a local app directory or a build artifact from a CI pipeline in a blob store like S3, Artifactory, or similar storage systems. And once the image is configured, the platform goes to work. The custom builder creates the build image and compiles the source code from the code repository if that's the source location, and once compiled, runs the application on the run image within the OCI compliant container. This container is then uploaded to the configured container registry. And finally, KPAC, as well as Tanzu Build Service, will continually monitor all of these source locations for updates. KPAC and Tanzu Build Service do include the option to update an image based on source code directly, as shown in this view. But it is expected that most customers will integrate KPAC and Tanzu Build Service into an existing continuous integration pipeline. With updates to the stack, whether from an OS level security patch or a new custom golden image being made available, KPAC and Tanzu Build Service will also automatically create new, secured, fully patched container images automatically and put them into your container registry to be picked up and deployed by your continuous delivery pipelines. And speaking of CI and CD, let's take a look at how Tanzu Build Service might fit into your existing continuous delivery workflow. Here, we see a high-level flow of how code might be developed and eventually pushed into production. As you can see, Tanzu Build Service does not replace your existing pipeline, but rather fits in the middle where container images are created. This is where many organizations currently may be using build scripts or Docker files. But using Tanzu Build Service allows your applications to be updated not only by source code updates, but also updates to the operating system as well as build dependency versions. With Tanzu Build Service, these new dependencies are pushed to the Tanzu network. Customers can configure their CI systems to listen there for updates and push those to the Tanzu Build Service. This would then trigger a container rebuild for all images using those updated dependencies. This ensures that if there is a vulnerability in one of these layers, a new container will be created for you automatically as soon as a patch is available. And speaking of Docker files, let's take a look at a hypothetical example of patching an operating system vulnerability using Docker files versus KPAC and Tanzu Build Service. Now, maybe your organization looks like this, standardized across all development teams to use a standard run image for all of your application containers. Or maybe it looks a little more like this, with teams using different versions or maybe even different distributions for container base images. Now, let's just say, for example, there's a vulnerability discovered in an SSL library embedded in the OS layer across most Linux distributions. What would this project look like at your organization? How much would this project cost your organization? And how long would new features be put on hold while this security hole was patched? And what about managing other dependencies? Do you have the reports you need for auditing in highly regulated environments? Access controls? And what about automating the entire workflow? Well, with Cloud Native Build Packs, KPAC, and Tanzu Build Service bringing it all together in this hypothetical example, all of your containers would be automatically patched and ready to be deployed within about 12 hours of the vulnerability being announced. And how do I know this? Because it is how Tanzu Application Service customers experience this exact vulnerability. And with KPAC and Tanzu Build Service, VMware is bringing this experience to Kubernetes. So I've talked a lot about Cloud Native Build Packs, KPAC, and how Tanzu Build Service is built on top of this proven platform. But I haven't talked about what Tanzu Build Service brings above and beyond what you would get from these open source projects. And let's get into that next. First, Tanzu Build Service allows for easier deployment and configuration compared to KPAC. This includes not just an easier deployment process in general, but also includes support for installing an air-gapped and offline environments necessary for many enterprises. It also allows for the injection of custom SSL certificates into build images, so the resulting image, as well as the private container registry, can trust each other. It also includes access to an ecosystem of Tanzu build packs and base operating systems. These include the offline build packs making air gap deployments possible. It also includes proprietary build packs directly from VMware, as well as support for commercial build and run images like Red Hat UBI, Windows containers, as well as custom base OS golden images. And of course, all of Tanzu Build Service is backed by the support of VMware. This includes not only troubleshooting and break fix support, but also speedy, reliable, and secure releases of Tanzu Build Packs, including all available security patches and feature enhancements. So now you know what Tanzu Build Service is, that it is based on years of proven open source performance, which is also backed by VMware. Now, let's take a look at how it works. 
Here, I have a Tanzu build service installation running on a local Kubernetes cluster. This is a fresh install of the latest GA release. I'm not going through the install process here, but if you want to follow along, I will link to a blog post that details the install process for a proof of concept environment. And if you want to install Tanzu build service for production use cases, I'll also link to the official documentation. So the first thing we need to do is configure Tanzu build service to reach my Docker Hub image registry. This will allow Tanzu build service to push the image it creates to that location. I'll do this by creating a secret in Tanzu build service. Then I'll put together an image configuration. This will help Tanzu build service what code to build, how to build it, and where to put the resulting OCI image. This will be enough for Tanzu build service to kick off an initial build of my application. With this image configuration, I will show you two ways in which Tanzu build service updates your application. First, I'm going to make a simple code change to the application. After I commit the new code, Tanzu build service will pick this up as a change to one of the layers it monitors and rebuild me a new image. Next, I'm going to provide Tanzu build service with a patched base OS image. This will simulate an OS patch being applied to the container, and Tanzu build service will again rebuild my container automatically. Through these workflows, you will see that Tanzu build service augments your application delivery pipelines by giving you a better way to build and continuously update your containers, whether that be from code changes, build dependencies, or OS patches. Okay, now on with the demo. So like I said, I have Tanzu build service installed here on my local Kubernetes cluster, but it's a clean install. Nothing has been configured. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell Tanzu build service how to access my private container registry. This is where it will push the images that it builds. I'm going to do that with this command, kp secret create, to create a secret for Tanzu build service that will be stored in Kubernetes. I'm passing it the base URL of the registry and my username. In this case, we're using Docker Hub, but Harbor, Artifactory, and many other OCI compliant container registries are also supported. And now it's going to prompt us for our password. There we go. Now, normally I would create another secret to tell Tanzu build service how to reach my private code repo. But in this case, the sample application I'm using is a public GitHub repo, so I can skip this step. But just know that the command is very similar to the one we just saw for configuring the registry. Okay, so just one more step here. I need to tell Tanzu build service about the image I want it to create. Here, I'm giving the image a referenceable name and telling Tanzu build service exactly the Docker Hub registry I want my image stored in and where the code resides in GitHub. There are many other options for configuring an image like including custom builders for a project or custom run images, but this is just a quick overview demonstration, so I'm going to keep this simple. Also note that I am configuring Tanzu build service to watch a branch for changes. This may or may not be a viable option for your workflow, as it could conflict with your CI pipelines. There are many options for monitoring custom code changes that I'll get into a bit later. This is just one of them. Okay, now I'll get that added. Okay, there we go. Now Tanzu build service will monitor the code repo, as well as any changes to any other part of the image stack, including build dependencies and OS patches. Since this is a brand new image, Tanzu build service will start a new build automatically. Let's go ahead and watch that here. And I'll speed up this portion until the image is successfully built. And there we go. Tanzu build service has built the image and pushed it to our registry. And here it gives us the explicit hash of the image as well. Okay, I'll go ahead and run that. Now I'll open up my web browser, refresh localhost to port 8080, and there it is. The application is up and running. Okay, now I'll make a quick code change. First, I'll pull down the repo from GitHub into my local environment. Then I'll edit this properties file. I'll just change the homepage welcome message to welcome to Tanzu build service. And save. And there we go. Next, I'll get this committed right into the main branch, of course. And push. And there we go. Now let's go back and watch Tanzu build service do its thing. Again, I'll speed this part up. Okay, there we go. A second image created from our commit. Now we'll go ahead and pull that new image. 
and rerun it. Back to Firefox and refresh. There we go. My changes were built into the container image and deployed. So seeing Tanzu Build Service rebuild an image based on code changes should give you a pretty good idea of what Tanzu Build Service does. It monitors different layers within the image for changes. And when a change is observed, it rebuilds the image. Now, you just saw what it does with one layer, the custom code layer. A quick note on this process. Here, I configured Tanzu Build Service to watch for updates to a code repo directly. Now, this is obviously doable in Tanzu Build Service, but it likely would not be configured this way in a production scenario. Configuring in this way could conflict with a CI and automated testing workflow, and Tanzu Build Service is not meant to replace this. It's a powerful tool for building OCI compliant containers, not for replacing CI. I could have just as easily configured Tanzu Build Service to watch for some other changes. For example, if my CI pipeline results in pushing a jar file or some other build artifact to an object storage bucket, I could use Tanzu Build Service to monitor that bucket. And from here, I can pick up the changes to build the artifact and rebuild the image. And there are other monitoring options as well. Next, I'm going to show you what it does for OS patches. Now, updated dependencies for Tanzu Build Service, including OS patches and new cloud native build packs versions, are pushed out from the VMware Tanzu teams on a regular basis. Again, recall from earlier that the OS layer of a container image, Tanzu Build Service referred to as a stack. These are a pair of build and run images. Here, I'm going to be downloading and deploying these manually from the Tanzu network, but it is likely you want to set up some automation to pull down the latest dependencies and test them in your environment prior to upgrading. Or you could be using your own custom golden images and pushing updates from there. For demo purposes, we're skipping these steps and just manually installing the stack updates provided from VMware. Now, I have already gone to the Tanzu network where the command to update the full cluster stack is conveniently provided. Full is the name of this particular cluster stack. There are a few others provided by default, and still more can be custom configured by users. These images are provided on the Pivotal registry, which gives you the ability to monitor for changes via automation. Here, I'm providing KP with the address of the updated build OS image and run OS image. Now I'll go ahead and update that. And there we go. Okay, now this is yet another update to an image layer that is monitored by Tanzu Build Service. So predictably, it will pick up that change and rebuild another image. Let's take a look at that next. And there we go. The third container image pushed to our repo ready to be deployed. Now, I did this with one container, but imagine if I had tens, hundreds, or even thousands of containers to patch. By singularly applying a new base OS image to Tanzu Build Service, every container it manages will be automatically rebuilt and placed in my container image repository, ready to be deployed into production. This is a very powerful feature of Tanzu Build Service. So that's it for this presentation on Tanzu Build Service. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and do let us know if you have any questions or feedback. Thanks a lot.